and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at additional business credits. And this is part three of three. So basically, this, this session will finish all the business credit and we'll move into the personal credit. So in this session, we'll look at low income housing, disabled access credit, small employer pension, employer provided child care, and credit for employer provided family and medical leave. This sounds like a lot, but it's not. We're going to go through each one of them, one or two slides, and move on. This topic is covered in income tax course, CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. Now, as always, I would like to remind my viewers that I would like to connect with you on a professional level, which is LinkedIn, as well as Facebook. Also, you could link with me personally on Facebook if you chose to. My YouTube channel is where you would like you would you would, should subscribe, like my videos, share them, put them in playlist, and also have a Twitter account and a website on my website. You will have you have access to the to the to all my recording organized by course and the chapter, so it's easier to navigate. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures about tax, auditing, accounting. If you're a CPA student, accounting student, you could supplement your studies with thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution, simulations, which is exercises and problems, textbook, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus others. If you happen to use Jaeger, use the PMF code, you will get 10% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So let's take a look at the first general business credit, which is low income housing credit. The purpose of this credit is to encourage home builders to make available affordable housing unit for low income individuals. So basically Congress wants to combat uh, homelessness and make sure low income individuals um, they have affordable housing. So they basically what they say, they would say, you build the building uh, and you rent it for low income housing will give you a tax credit. So this is the encouragement. The credit amount is based on the qualified basis of the property, which which is dependent on the number of unit rented to low income. So if you have 100 unit, how much of those are rented to low income? Credit is allowed over a 10 year period. This, you'll spread the credit over 10 year and subject to potential recapture. So if you started it as a low income housing, then you change your mind, then the credit is recaptured. They will take it away from you. So Sarah spent a million dollars to build a qualified low income housing project that's completed January 1st for the current year. The entire project is rented to low income families. The credit rate for property placed in service during January is 7.48%. Sarah claim a credit of 74,800 in the current year and in each of the following nine years. So remember, the credit is over nine years. If Sarah only made 75% of the project unit available to low income, her credit will be, well, 750,000 times the credit. So depending on how many units are you renting. So it's in your best interest to rent the whole thing for low income if you want to get the credit. Another credit uh, that falls under the general business credit is disabled access credit, okay? And basically what, what this is, is to encourage uh, businesses to make sure their business complying with American Disability Act. Now bear in mind, there's a date, there's a specific date, there's a specific cutoff date for this credit. So not everyone that makes their business uh, uh, accessible to, uh, to disabled will get this credit, okay? so. Credit is available for eligible access expenditure made by small businesses, include the amount paid to remove barriers that would otherwise make a business inaccessible to disabled or handicapped individuals. Facility qualifies if they are placed in service before November 6, 1990. So this is important in a sense that if your building, if your business is after November 6, 1990, the assumption is it should be compliant. It should be compliant disability uh, with the American Disability Act. It should be compliant. However, it, if it was before November 6, 1990, then there was no requirement. Therefore, if you do make it accessible, then we will uh, we will give you a credit. Okay, you, all businesses should have their uh, place of business accessible to handicapped individuals. So that's that's simply fair. But the, but the government wants to encourage you to do so. Well, how much is the credit amount? The credit amount is 50% times the expenditure. So you have to spend more than 250, but not more than 10,250. Now you could spend more than 10,250, but the credit is 50% of the amount that, that, that's an X, that's up to 10,250, not counting the first 250. So simply put, it's 10,000 times 50%, which is, $5,000. So the credit amount is $5,000. 
Now, basis in the asset is reduced by the credit amount. Obviously, the basis on the property, if you receive any credit, will have to be reduced. Okay? And why does it, why do we reduce the basis? Because this is important. We reduce the basis because you cannot have the credit and keep your basis up. Basically, you get the credit, you reduce your basis. So when you sell the building down the road, you recapture the, that credit in the gain. Okay. Red is an eligible small business, makes $11,000 capital improvement in building that has, that has been placed in service in June of 1990, so it qualifies. The improvement made Red's business more accessible to the disabled and constitute eligible expenditure for the purpose of disability access, access credit. The amount of the credit is only $5,000, although the individual, the Red Inc. spent $11,000, we only count $10,250 minus $250 times 50%. Although 11,000 of eligible expenditure are incurred, only the excess of 10,250 over the 250 qualify for the credit. The adjusted basis of the capital improvement is um, the adjusted basis of the capital improvement is $6,000, which is the cost, which is 11,000 minus the amount of the credit. Okay. Remember, you spent 11,000. Your basis should go up by 11,000. Then you get a credit of 5,000. Then your basis will go down by 5,000. Overall, your basis went up by 6,000. But remember, you spent 11, went up by 6. So basically, you reduced your expenditure in terms of uh, in the increase in basis. It should have been. So let's assume you did the, you, you incurred the expenditure without the credit. Therefore, your basis will go up by 11. But since you got the credit, we bring, we brought, we bring it down. Simply put, the you cannot have the credit and experience lower gain when you sell the uh, sell the property or or more losses lower gain or more losses you cannot have it both ways you get the credit lower your basis by the amount of the credit another credit uh, under the general business credit is the credit for small employer pension plan startup costs so basically what they want to do they want to encourage small businesses to offer a pension retirement plan for their employees so if you do so the government will give you a credit that's the whole purpose of it so small businesses can claim it's a non-refundable tax credit for the admin, admin costs of establishing and maintaining a, a qualified retirement. And how do we define small business? If you have fewer than 100 employees who have earned at least $5,000 of compensation. What is the credit amount here? The credit amount is 50% of the qualified startup cost limited to a maximum of $50 per year for three years. So basically... $500 per year for three years, so it will help the company kind of manage their startup cost for a pension plan. So just want want you to encourage you to get, um, help your employees enroll in a retirement plan. Deduction of, for startup cost is reduced by the amount of the credit. Of course, if you receive the credit, you cannot have the credit at the same time uh, have the full deduction. So if you spend any money, that money will be reduced by the amount of the credit. So you cannot have the credit and fully deduct the expenses. Okay. Maple Company decide to establish a qualified retirement plan for its employee. In the process, it pays a consulting fees of twelve hundred to a firm that provide educational seminars to its employee and assist in making necessary changes to the payroll system. Maple may claim a credit for the pension plan startup of five hundred dollar, which is. 1200 the qualifying cost, but you are limited to 1000 per year times 50%, and its deduction for these expenses is reduced by 400 So simply put, you'll get a credit of 500 You spent 1200 You cannot deduct 1200 because you got a credit of 500 Now your expense deduction or your tax deduction is 700 out of the 1200 Remember, you got the credit. You cannot have the credit, and at the same time, have your cake and eat it. Have the credit and claim the tax deduction. Another credit is credit for employer provided provided child care. And this is important for a lot of families. I mean, I do have uh, a kid, so it's important for parents to make sure their uh, son or daughter is, is, is taken care of. So what happened if your employer can provide a child care facility, that's excellent. And I know at, you know, I, I know um, I teach at a college and they do have child care facility. Okay. So employer can claim a credit for providing childcare facilities to their employees during their normal uh, working hours. Now, it, it's limited to $150,000 per year. The expenditure are limited to that much. So how does it work? Uh, the credit amount is 25% of qualified childcare expense or 10% of ch ch qualified childcare resource and referral services. Okay. 
Deductible qualified expenses must be reduced by the credit amount. Again, we repeat this concept again and again. If you incur expenses, you get a credit for those expenses, a tax credit, you have to reduce your expenses by the tax credit. I know we keep repeating this concept, but it's important for you to understand you cannot have both for the same amount. Basis of the qualifying property must be reduced by the credit amount. Same thing, the basis for the property will have to be reduced by the credit amount. You cannot get the credit, then keep your basis for the property up. Okay? And credit might be subject to recapture if child care facilities cease to be used for the qualifying purposes within 10 years of being placed in service. So we're going to give you a credit, but the first 10 years, this facility must be used for child care purposes for your employees. Otherwise, if it change, you know, you, you turn it into an office building, then guess what? You have to recapture this credit. Okay. During the year, Payne Company constructed a child care facility for 400000 to be used by its employees who have preschool age children in need of child care services while their parents are work. Fair enough. In addition, Tan incurred salaries for child care workers and other administrative cost facility of 100000 As a result, Tan credit for employer provided child care is 125000 which is computed as 400 plus 100, those are qualified expenditure, times 25%. Okay? Notice they did not exceed 150000 Correspondingly, the basis of the facility is reduced to 300000 So you spend, you, sp uh, you spend, uh, sorry, you spend on the facility 400000 to build the facility, but you get a, a credit of 100000 You get a credit of, I'm sorry, you get a credit, yes. Uh, remember, the 400000 times 25% gave you a credit of 100,000. Therefore, the building basis will have to be reduced by 100,000. Therefore, your basis in the building is 100,000. Now, also your administrative expenses, remember you spent 100,000 on salaries and administrative expenses. You got 25% credit for that. You got 25,000 credit. And those two are the credit. This is the 125. Therefore, if you spent 100,000, you have to reduce it by the credit. So your expense for administrative cost is 75. Notice the credit reduced your basis in the building. Um, uh, and the credit reduced your expenses for the salaries and administrative. Once again, for the third or fourth time, you cannot have the credit, the related credit, and the full expense. You'll get the credit, you reduce your expenses. And uh, the last uh, the last business credit we're going to be working with is the credit for employer-provided family and medical leave. And this is basically um, if, you, if you grant your employees... Uh, medical family and medical paid leave obviously if it's even even better <coughs> the government will give you a credit okay employer can claim a general business credit equal to 12.5 percent of wages paid to qualifying employees while they are on a family and medical leave so that's not bad that's good it's what is the purpose here the purpose is to encourage employer to be family friendly businesses so the government said look you allow them to have that medical leave, and especially when, when, when someone think about when somebody um, uh, is having an, a newborn child, maybe you, you want to grant the parents medical leave. So if you do if you do so, I mean, you are required by law to grant the medical leave a certain amount, but if you do above and beyond, then you'll get a child, uh, a credit for that, okay? To claim this credit, employer must pay a minimum of 50% of the wages normally paid to an employee during the leave. So the pay that you have to, the pay has to be at least 50% of their normal wages. So if they're getting $2,000 hour a week, you have to pay them at least $1,000, okay? Credit is increased by 0.25 percentage point for each percentage point above 50, above 50%. 50 So if you pay them more than, two, more than 50%, the credit is increased by 0.25. The credit is limited to 12 weeks of leave per employee during the taxable year, and they could be away for 12 years. You'll get the credit for that. Okay. Employer must have a written policy in place that allow all qualifying full-time, so you cannot discriminate uh, employees no less than two weeks of annual of annual paid family leave. So the employer, they have must have a written policy to allow all qualifying full-time, okay, no less than two weeks annual paid family and medical leave. Okay. The credit applies to the wages paid in taxable years beginning 2017 and before 2020. So this this is a limited amount. This credit is, it eventually it will expire unless it gets extended. So this is basically, those are the list of business credit that I wanted to talk about.
the next topic we're going to look at is we're going to start to go into personal uh, personal uh, tax credit and we'll start with earned income credit if you have any questions any comments about those recording please email me if you need additional lectures please visit my, my website if you happen to do so please consider donating good luck